We're not going to need a fishing rod. We're not going to need a spear gun. Hell, we're not even going to need gloves. So I'm going to show you how I catch banjo sharks using nothing but my bare hands. And hopefully, I don't lose one of these. You. So I am frothing for this catch and cook, right? So I've never eaten banjo shark. I've caught heaps of them. They're everywhere around in this area. And you ask people if they're any good to eat and everyone always gives you, nah, tastes like cardboard. They're no good, mate. But if you ask a follow-up question, ask, have you actually eaten one? The answer's always no. So I'm frothing because I'm gonna test this out. I'm gonna see if they really are a junk fish or I found myself a new table fish. Let's check it out. I feel like I'm going to start doing a few episodes like this where we actually do a bit of catching and cooking of what's supposedly inedible fish and see if they're really as bad as what people are making them out. So, coming soon, this is episode one of catching inedible fish and cooking inedible fish. Let's do it. <laughs> So the most I've had to do with banjos while diving is literally like picking them up with my hands and throwing them onto mate's backs while they're on the surface spearfishing. So what I've found from this is they don't really have a specific ground or territory that they cover. They just sort of lurk around on the bottoms and you just come across them. So let's continue. I did pretty well to spot that fella, he was pretty deep in that grass but I managed to grab him by the tail and pull him up, so that was good. So I'm going to dispatch of him, I've got about a 300 metre swim back into shore with him. So I didn't bring a catch bag, a knife, or well, I bought a knife, but I didn't bring anything else, so just swimming one arm and the flippers, so I'll see you in there. So if you've never seen a banjo before, this is what they look like, real prehistoric looking things. So this is it, this is the big old horse head here. So, a bit like me, its head's pretty hollow. So what we'll do is we'll actually take off its wings and heads here, head here, and we'll basically take that big fillet from right down there. I am frothing, let me tell you, I'm so stoked to see what this thing tastes like now. Can't wait. Welcome to the Stray Mate Kitchen. So what's happened is, is we've got back to the car and the head didn't fit in the cooler. So I've had to lock the head off. You can see I've just done wet from around where the rib cage is. And we're left with this long fillet. So the plan will be to take off these fins and then you've got this hard backbone going down here. So I believe that we'll just end up having to fillet it just like a fish. Again, I've never filleted a banjo shark. Filleted a lot of fish and shark, but never one of these. So let's see how we go. We'll take off. Geez, this skin's tough. It's gonna to be interesting to fill it. Well, it's probably gonna be more interesting to skin. Take off your two fins. Then we're just gonna find our backbone there. And we're gonna run this along. Try to 
waste as little as possible. You can feel this skin, it's crazy how tough it is. So I've ended up with a fillet like that. And we'll have to work out how to skin him now. So, second fillet. Again, keep as close to that backbone as possible. Bang. That's what we're left with. Right that to the side. Okay, so we got our two fillets and just feeling them, you can't really feel any bones in them, which is really good apart from just these couple here at the end, but we'll, we'll sort them out later. So I'm thinking I can't really lay it flat and take the skin off because of the curve. So what I'm gonna do is slice it into two separate fillets, which will be four fillets all up. And from there, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be able to skin it. Let's go. So we've got as much of the bloodline out as we can and we've ended up with this. So not a whole lot of meat considering the size of the fish. So we'll see how we go. To say I'm frothing is an understatement. Bit of a treat for you guys today. What we've got, bit of flour, sweet chili, panko crumbs in a bag. Plan will be chuck our fish into the flour, dust it, take it out into the sweet chili, coat it in sweet chili. This is just like how you'd coat with egg. I'm gonna have to wash my hands. Bag of panko crumbs, reason being, was literally grab all those pieces, try and drain a little bit of that chili off them. Grab your bag. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your banjo. Give me a good shake around. And you should be. Chuck them all out. Let's not be too precious about it. You got beautiful little crumb bits of sweet chili chark. Let the sizzle show begin. Oh yeah. How good's this look? Oh, look at that. This looks epic. So, once you've got them golden brown, whip them off. On a scale of one to 10, I reckon I'm genuinely about a 12 to try these. The main event. It's actually really good. Try a different bit. It's really good. It tastes like gummy shark or flake. First episode of the Inedible Fish and we're We've had a winner. Well, righto, like last week, I told you we've both got a job to do. I'm gonna finish the rest of this banjo. And you wanna click subscribe, subscribe. See you next week, hey Root. I'm like, years, call me eons. When the snare kick in, the beat is neon. Lights, yeah, I'm feeling magnificent. Uh, care less what I'm up against. Yeah, you know I stay fresh like pepper mesh. Right. And I dive head first when I jump in it. I run it back like a champ, won't fumble it. And you ain't gotta ask, you know we running it. Flip the script. I reckon we're in for it. If you're gonna do it yourself, 
You gotta do one. Are you feeling yourself? Yeah, I'm feeling myself. 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 Are you feeling